Hi, on this video we will start building our application database and fill it with some records for testing purposes. In other words, we will add our application tables to our project's default database which already has the user's account tables. However, we are going to do that inside SQL Server Management Studio instead of Visual Studio, as this will help us avoid opening too many windows inside Visual Studio. So currently our database is connected to Visual Studio. The first step you have to follow is to close your project. Otherwise, SQL Server will fail to connect this database as long as it already opened with Visual Studio. So we will go here and close our solution. Okay, and go to SQL Server. So SQL Server Management Studio and it's very important to open it as an admin. Otherwise, you will not be able to attach any databases inside SQL Server. Now, let's open the databases and right-click and attach a new database. Then, I will open our projects folder by clicking Add and then go to our project here and go to App Data and double-click here. Let's click OK. Let's click OK. Okay, now our database has been successfully attached to Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. However, I want to rename this one to a meaningful name, for example, 101 Designs Project. Now we have succeeded with the first step. The second step is to reopen the project again. So when you click on Open Project and open the same project again and go to Server Explorer and try to open this database which is the same database we have already connected here this will give you an error so it couldn't connect the database because it's opened by SQL Server Management Studio so I will right click here and modify the connection and change the connection to MSQL Server instead of MSQL Server database file click OK and for the server name here type the server name or just type a dot so let's refresh after typing the dot now all the databases has been already loaded here we will choose 101 designs project and click OK now our database has been successfully connected to our project here however if you go to uh, web.config file you will find that the default connection still refers to the same local database file instead of referring to the 101 designs project database inside the SQL Server. So you have to type another connection with the same name default connection but with a proper connection string. There is a workaround to do that easily. Open any file, for example the about.aspx and go to the design mode, go to Server Explorer and drag any table from these tables here and once you do that if you open the web.config you will find that another connection has been added this is the proper connection which connects to Microsoft SQL Server now all you have to do is copy the default connection name and paste it here and then remove this connection altogether now we have succeeded to connect to SQL Server Management Studio now let's add our projects tables and in the interest of time I will do that by pasting the queries that should take the responsibility of creating those tables. However, before running these queries I will create a new schema that should hold all of our future projects tables except the default tables which have been already created by Visual Studio. Currently, if you open the table we have a default scheme here called DBO DBO is the default scheme for any new database and in order to add a new schema let's open programmability and open the security then go to schemes and add a new scheme so new schema and I will give the schema the name of data for example and click on OK now let's paste our query here so I will create a table under the scheme data called design and has all of those fields now let's run the query okay now let's refresh our tables list here we go we have a new table here called data.design if we right click it and go to the design mode we will find that this table has a 
primary key called the design ID and if we go to its properties we will find that the identity specification has been set to yes and the identity increment has been set to 1 which means that each time a new record got inserted it will be given a new automated ID with the increment of 1 than the previous record's ID now let's close this table and create another table that should hold the files related to each design so the design files could be an image, could be an AutoCAD file, could be a Revit file, could be a zip file and so on so the second table so I will create a table called design file and please notice that I have already avoided to give that table the name file because in Visual Studio we have already a namespace called file so file.delete, file.copy all of the file functions in Visual Studio will conflict with the file table so give it the name design file instead so the design file has a file ID which is connected to something called the design ID and the file URL and a smaller version of the file in case it's an image called icon URL now let's click on execute now let's right click here and refresh our table and right click design and we will find here a primary key for the file ID now let's open the database diagram and create a new database diagram click yes and add the design and the design file tables and connect the design ID from the design table to the design ID from the design file table and set the insert and update delete rule to cascade so once you delete any design all of its related files will get deleted in the design table notice that there is a field called user ID which is responsible for saving the ID of the website staff member user who has already uploaded this design so in order to connect this with the users table I will right click here and add a table called ASP.NET users and connect this table to the design table okay but in case we delete the user we don't want the design to be deleted so in the insert and update delete rule I will set it to set null so this field will get empty once I delete the user who has already uploaded the new design click on OK and that's all we need from the database now let's fill the database with some records I will close this diagram here and I will confirm the save of the tables and right now if, if you edit the top 200 rows you will find that the database is empty this table is empty and of course this table is empty as well so I will write here a code to fill both tables with a testing data in order to be able to test it inside our application and build our repeaters and so on so let's go here to notepad and copy those SQL insert command and paste it inside the query window then execute it okay now let's open the design table right now we have already eight records uploaded by this user and now let's go to notepad and copy this code which will insert testing rows inside the design file so paste and execute success now let's go to the design file and edit top 200 ok now the category here as you might notice is image for all of those files and there is a file URL which is the original file and there is an icon URL which is again considered a low resolution version of the file in case the files type is an image at the moment I kept both URLs the same until we discuss how to create a system to compress the original image into a smaller version and save it somewhere else and you can notice here that for design ID 1 for example we have two images here with the category of image for the design number 2 we have two images as well for design number 3 we have three images and for design number 3 
we have here another type of files which is not an image so it got the category equals to null I can set the category to anything instead of image but I prefer keeping it as null so these files are 1.dwg and 2.dwg and the third file has the extension zip now it's time to copy those physical files into our projects folder here inside images paste the designs so the designs folder contains all the files I referred to inside the design file table now let's go back to Visual Studio and the first thing I will do here is to go to the models folder and create a new entity framework so I will click here on add new edu.net entity data model so by clicking here and enter the name of model 1 and click OK you will be redirected to the wizard so I will create I will select the first item here entity framework designer from database click on next and then I will rename the new connection inside web.config to entities 101 designs don't try to enter 101 designs because Visual Studio will not accept a name that has number at the beginning let's click on next okay now let's take all the tables that belongs to the data so by checking this I will select the design and the design file you don't have to select the tables under the DBO because all the tables under the DBO is already included into the identity model .vb. let's click on finish and let's see what will happen here inside the web.config so it gives me a message here that the web.config has been already modified I will update everything let's go here so a new connection has been added here with the name of entities 101 designs which we have already selected and there is something here called model1.edmx diagram and I will close this diagram and close the web.config file I will unsave this one by creating a new entity framework that will save us from spending a lot of time trying to create object oriented programming classes we will see in details how to use the entity framework we have just created on the future lessons Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please press like.